Hello there, I'm Mark Pentecost from Anglicare. Welcome to Anglicare Church to You. And welcome to today's service recorded at St. James Chapel at Castle Hill. Uh, hello, my name's Grant Dibden. Anzac Day, 25 April, is the day Australians remember the original landing at Gallipoli in 1915. The spirit of Anzac, with its human qualities of courage, mateship and sacrifice, continues to have meaning and relevance for our sense of national identity. On this Anzac Day, we remember those who served and sacrificed in the theatres of war and homeland service. 100,000 Australians have died in wars. The vast majority of those are aged between 18 and 25. And while we don't glory in war, we do remember the sacrifice of those who went before us. We would like to show our respect and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and of elders past and present on which this meeting takes place. Our first hymn is Abide With Me. Abide with me Fast fall even time, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can Oil the tempter's power, who like thyself my guide and stay can be through cloud and sunshine, Lord abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? If thou abide with me, hold thou my cross before my closing eyes, shine through the gloom and point me to the skies Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee In life, in death 
O Lord, abide with me. Let us pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God of love and liberty, we bring our thanks today for the peace and security we enjoy. We remember those who in time of war faithfully served their country. We pray for their families and for ourselves whose freedom was won at such a cost. Make us a people zealous for peace and hasten that day when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither learn war any more. This we pray in the name of one who gave his life for us for the sake of the world, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. A prayer for peace. God of the nations whose sovereign rule brings justice and peace, have mercy on our broken and divided world. We pray especially today for those areas where there is violence and chaos. Establish your peace in the hearts of all and banish from them the spirit that makes for war so that all races and nations may learn to live as members of one family and in obedience to your laws. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for service personnel. Heavenly Father, thank you for those who serve us in the defence and police forces, in the fire brigades and ambulance services. Give them courage and protection when they face loneliness, misunderstanding or danger. Help us to be grateful for what they do and support them with respect and honour in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh God, our ruler and guide, in whose hands are the destinies of this and every nation, we give you thanks for the freedoms we enjoy in this land and for those who lay down their lives to defend them. We pray that we and all the Australian people, gratefully remembering their courage and their sacrifice, may have the grace to live in a spirit of justice, of righteousness and of peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A poem in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, they mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short of days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold on high, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though proppies grow in Flanders fields. A poem, We Shall Keep the Faith. O oh, you who sleep in Flanders fields, sleep sweet to rise anew. We caught the torch you threw, and holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. We cherish too the poppy red that grows on fields where valour led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies, but lends a lustre to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders fields. And in the torch and poppy red, we wear in honour of the dead, fear not that ye have died for naught. We teach the lesson that ye wrought, 
In Flanders fields, in Flanders fields we fought. Let's sing together, O oh God our help in ages past. Hello, my name is Colin Watson and I'd like to thank you all for being here today to remember those who fought for our country. We are determined never to forget the men and women who gave themselves in war that we may enjoy our freedom and security, especially in our own country. We're here today as an act of remembrance, lest we forget. In particular, we remember Gallipoli, the dawn of April the 25th, 1915 the packed boats, the chaos of the beach landings, the bravery of the troops and the stubborn resistance of the enemy, the incredible difficulties of the terrain and the acts of extraordinary heroism. We'll always owe these people a great deal and the planners of campaigns understandably do not take into account the Christian calendar when timetabling a military operation. So it happened that the landing at Gallipoli on the 25th of April 1915 was actually St Mark's Day and also a Sunday. Padres would have been very active on that morning. The campaign lasted until December, during which time over 7,000 Australians were killed. Their graves are tended at Gallipoli to this very day. Besides them are New Zealand, British, French and Indian war cemeteries on that distant peninsula. The effect of that campaign, which was reported in great detail, and more particularly the casualty lists that were published in the daily press, were devastating to the home population. Our citizens certainly have been educated to the possibility of the destruction of war. Training had been stepped up around 1907. By 1909, the Royal Australian Navy had been founded and they didn't know that the event of war breaking out between Britain and Germany, that Australia had committed 20,000 troops to be deployed anywhere the Imperial High Command actually required. And so that 20,000 plus 10,000 New Zealanders formed the Anzac contingent that left for Egypt in October 1914 to continue training, not knowing where they would be used. And as we all know, six months later, they were severely involved in a battle against the Turks 
as allies of the Germans in a tactically badly managed and unwinnable campaign. Since then, we have heard repeatedly that on the cliffs of Gallipoli, Australia became a nation that were fighting for God, king and empire against the forces of oppression. Now, the irony was, of course, that the enemy, the Germans, also thought they were fighting in the name of Almighty God against the forces of mediocrity and barbarism. Every nation, I suppose, feels that its cause is the right one, certainly that God is always on its side. So it's always a situation that when war breaks out, it's always a case of right versus right, or it may just appear so. If Jesus is the human face of God, then his teaching about the revolutionary significance of not only loving our neighbours, but also our enemies, has some validity, particularly as we meet today. We still have war and strife in our world. We, in fact, have a message um, that we hear from people all over the world speaking about war and its effects on people. We see it on our television screens and we're saddened. But today, as we always do, we need God's help in our dealings in this life. And the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was a cynical act of opportunism, whereas the high priest recommended at Jesus' trial that it was expedient that one man should die for all the people. We will never forget the sacrifices of those who fought for our nation and the pain of those who waited for them. We ought also not to forget what we owe to God. We must not forget the unique sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, and the way in which it meets our deepest needs for repentance and forgiveness, as well as our hopes for a life beyond this one, where there will be no more war, no more tears, no more sickness. So as we stop today to remember the sacrifice of so many, we see that God also sacrificed his one and only son so that our lives would also have freedom and a secure future. Let me pray and give thanks to God. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those who fought for our country to preserve our freedom. We also thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus who also brought us freedom and security and eternal life. Father, help us to look to you. We give you thanks today for those who fought and did so much for our country. And we thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice for us also. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.
today is from Romans chapter 5 verses 6 to 11. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Can you imagine what it was like for Australians here during World War I? Out of a population of 5 million, 62,000 were killed. 150,000 were wounded and 400,000 returned from war. So about one in three households had someone directly affected by the war. And the war hurt the Australian economy. Markets for key exports like wool were lost. Wages failed to keep pace with the rising cost of living and the government chose to fund the war effort by increasing the note issue. Sounds a bit like quantitative easing, doesn't it? And they did this by taking out loans. And it was a very, very difficult time for those who didn't even go to war. 
And you would think that coming out of such a difficult time where people really needed a boost, that we would celebrate a great victory like the one where the 800 Australian light horsemen mounted a charge across three kilometres of open ground against 4,000 entrenched Turkish infantrymen who were supported by artillery and machine guns at Beersheba in 1915. And just 31 Australian lives were lost. Or the great Australian battle at Villers Bretonneux, described by a British general as perhaps the greatest individual feat of the war. But that isn't what we did. And even today, most Australians know little of those victories. But Gallipoli, oh yes, we know about Gallipoli. Our most solemn remembrance looks back to the occasion of defeat and loss. To Gallipoli, where 16,000 Anzac soldiers landed and 4,000 of them became casualties on the very first day where wave after wave of young troops were ordered over the top of their trenches in futile frontal charges and where 10,000 are buried. We remember that. Why? Why has our defeat at Gallipoli become nation-shaping? Why is it that us Aussies who are notoriously irreverent, why is it that we show a reverence as we commemorate annually the defeat that was Gallipoli? Well, I I think it's because Gallipoli symbolises for us the qualities of courage in the face of great danger, of reckless valour in a good cause, of endurance that will never admit defeat, of caring for your mates and sacrifice. You see, the histories record that the soldiers at Gallipoli consistently volunteered for the most dangerous missions. They wanted to show their worth rather than stay alive as cowards. And it's recorded numerous times that wounded soldiers refused to take more than one or two sips of water because others on the battlefield needed it more. That's what we respect. That's what we appreciate and value. The honour, the courage, the selflessness, the sticking at it to get the job done under such harrowing circumstances, the personal sacrifice... You see, that's what we find inspiring. You see, time dims the memory of ordinary events, but not great events. In a nation's history, great events, whether in peace or war, live in our memories regardless of time. They're deemed great not necessarily for what they achieve, nor whether they're reckoned to be victories or successes, Rather, the great events are distinguished by the quality of human endeavour that they call upon, by the examples they create for ordinary men and women, by the sacrifices they make and by how they inspire us. A hundred thousand Australians have died in wars. The vast majority of those are aged between 18 and 25. And while we don't glory in war, we do remember the sacrifice of those who went before us. Because there is something noble about sacrifice, isn't there? And the sacrifice of Jesus is still at the centre of the symbolism of Anzac Day with its crosses for the fallen, its sacrificial language and the reverence. But Jesus' sacrifice is on a different level. You'll recall from the reading that Jesus died for us while we were his enemy. In verse 10. Did you catch that? That I was an enemy of God. That you were an enemy of God. Because we had sinned against God. Because that's what verse 8 tells us. Because of our sin. And we often think of sin as murder or rape or bank robbery. And of course they are. But in the Bible sin is also turning our back on God. Which can be just ignoring him. You don't even have to be rejecting him. And that's very serious stuff because of who it is that we're treating like this. It's the sovereign Lord of the universe who made us and is in control of all things. And you can't ignore him. We broke the relationship and we rebelled. And because we did that, we're called an enemy. That's what we've done to God. And the Bible says that we've become God's enemies. 
And that is a terrible position to be in. But there is good news. You knew there must be. I'm sure you heard it in our reading. Hear it in verse 8. God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then in verse 10, where we see that we were God's enemies who were reconciled to him through the death of his son, Jesus. This was a deliberate act of a loving God to bring about reconciliation between God and humankind. Jesus, the perfect man, God in human form, that Jesus, he died for you. God himself dying in our place on the cross to reconcile that broken relationship. He did this deliberately and he did it while we were still sinners, while we were rebels. And he did it to restore us rebels. I mean, that's hard to grasp, isn't it? Jesus dying for us while we were his enemy, as members of the Defence Force will know, you would never do that for your enemy. So, so to die in an enemy's place, I mean, it, it just makes no sense. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. You would never do that. And yet, and yet that is what God did for us. That's what he did. Dying for your country or dying for your mates like those who did on Anzac Day is hard enough. But for Jesus to die for us while we, were his, while we were his enemies is truly incomprehensible. It's indeed amazing love. Jesus died to bring you personally into a relationship with him so that you may know the creator of the universe. Not know about him, but know him personally, deeply. It's where you can experience his love when you get to know him like that. It's where you can be accepted by him personally. Where you can deeply experience that intimacy of his love. Not because of what you have done, but because of what Jesus has done for you. How good is that? Being with God and enjoying him forever. All you have to do is accept that gift. To trust him. And then, of course, you'll want to live for him out of gratitude for the amazing love that he showed you in laying down his life for you. What a wonderful sacrifice that is. The story of Anzac touches a deep part in all of us. It's a story of sacrificial living and giving and loving. Sacrifice, love and hope are woven right through that Anzac story and they resonate with what Jesus did for humanity. A little over a hundred years ago, thousands of men gave their lives so that we might enjoy freedom. A little over 2,000 years ago, God the Son gave his life, his perfect life for us so that we might enjoy eternity with him. What a wonderful, wonderful blessing that is as we remember those who gave their lives so that we might have freedom, let us also particularly remember the Lord Jesus who gave his life so that we might have eternal life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the men and women who sacrificed themselves for us that we might live in freedom. And Lord, we, we thank you too, particularly for your son who came and died in our place so that we might have eternal freedom, life with you forever in heaven. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once 
once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. lest we forget. Thank you. 
southern cross We'll toil with hearts and hands To make this commonwealth of ours Renown of all the lands For those who come across the seas we boundless plains to share The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Abide with me, fast falls even time. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help.